Hello, Tom Lebecki here with the latest edition of the New Theory Podcast. So for those listening, uh, I appreciate each and every one of you. Our listenership is growing. And for that, I am grateful and thank you. Um, we started about a year and a half ago. Uh, we were over 200 episodes at this point. Started out as a side experiment and is really going strong and really uh, moving forward the New Theory brand. So check out our website, newtheory.com, as well as check out our podcast. If you're listening in, to like, comment, and share. Share with your friends, as well as make sure you subscribe on your listening platform. So we take the time to get you extra special guests, and this guest is no exception. We have Brett Putter. Uh, he is the author of Culture Death Dex, uh, excuse me, sorry, Culture Dex Decoded, Transform Your Culture into a Visible, Conscious, and Tangible Asset. Uh, nowadays, what makes a difference, you know, like everybody's access to technology, right? Everybody has access to uh, products, services, and so forth. But what really makes a difference is the people, and then to um, support those people, it needs to be a strong culture. Brett, welcome to New Theory Podcast. How are you doing today? Tom, uh, really great to be on board. Thanks very much for having me. I'm doing great. So very much, very good. Beautiful. Where are you calling in from? I'm actually calling you from Romania. I'm um, on vacation with my uh, family here, and um, we've had a, we started with a white uh, white Christmas, so it's all good. Love it, and I'm glad that you're uh, taking the time out of your busy schedule and your vacation to uh, give us a call. All right, so we chatted a little bit before the podcast, and what I want to focus on today is, you know, what gets people, companies specifically, from you know good to great. What are some of those companies? And, you know, it's this culture. So let's first talk, start, let's be selfish for a second, right? We're all small business owners, entrepreneurs, maybe managing a team. Um, why does culture matter? Let's first talk about that. So culture matters because every single company, big or small, early or late stage, has a culture. And most companies, most CEOs of companies don't, invest the time to define their culture and culture is the one sustainable competitive advantage that a ceo has complete control over so if you don't as a ceo if you don't invest in it and you don't define it embed it nurture it and manage it over time you're actually missing out on one of the strongest most impactful uh, assets your business has so so that was one of the things I've always wondered. I look at it like there's always a culture no matter what. Might as well be cognizant of it, right? And, and work to build a culture that's congruent with, you know, your core values and so forth. So let's just say you want to be really committed to improving, improving your company or corporate culture in 2019. Where does it start? Is it a value statement, a mission statement? Um, you know, what's the starting point to really give a good visible, you know, conscious effort as we talk about? Um, towards getting the right culture? So I believe that the DNA, fundamental DNA of a company are the values. And I recommend that companies start with their value statement. Um, if you've got a mission, a vision, or a purpose on top of that, that's great. But if you don't, start with the values and then work on your mission and vision at the same time. Um, it can take a long time. It can take months and months to, to clarify what your values are and um, it's really critically important that you involve the team. I see a lot of companies, the senior executives say, these are our values and the people on the floor or the people uh, lower down in the chain look back and go, well, that, that doesn't resonate with us. So really, it's, it's critically important to start with the values and involve the team. So what are you doing in this conflict? So let's just say you have a really performance-based culture. And you guys are grinding it out and you're doing, and gals grinding it out and, you know, Hey, you go over 40 hours in a week cause you have a deadline, but it doesn't, but it kind of interferes maybe with, you know, local laws, or maybe it's a situation where, you know, you don't have the money cause you're a startup to pay that extra time and a half, but like you have a really strong culture and they're, they're even involved. Like they, like you just really want to grind and you really want to do the right thing and your performance based culture, but it kind of conflicts with maybe, not breaking the law, but maybe laws or kind of conflicts with some kind of parameters that are out there. How do you work through stuff like that? I find that uh, companies that 
build really, really strong cultures end up with uh, teammates and, and, and employees who give that extra uh, 10%, that extra 20%, actually of their free will, they aren't forced to do it. And a number of companies I've spoken to, actually their challenge is to actually get their employees working less which is an interesting challenge to have. But that actually is one of the outcomes of a strong culture. Uh, it's, a, it's an interesting problem. Um, but the way I look at it is people have this discretionary energy at the time that you could be, you know, after work, after work hours, you could be walking the dog, you could be, you know, surfing the web. Instead, people are thinking about the company and thinking about how to solve a problem for the company. So from, from a perspective of le- leadership dealing with that, you know, it's it's a case of making sure that employees take enough vacation time. Uh, there's a company called Hotjar in Europe, and uh, Hotjar have a wall of shame. If you don't take vacation, you go up on the wall of shame. Uh, so there are lots of different ways, clever ways and smart ways to make sure that your people balance out working hard, but also uh, living well. Okay, so for example, if part of your culture is to and again, it's, I'm so conflicted because on one end, I, I, don't, I do not think work is everything, right? And I need to have, this podcast was, was started um, as a byproduct of me wanting to branch out and do different things. So to keep it interesting, right? So, so with that being said, um, I 100% agree with you, um, you know, in terms of, you know, building a culture that is instilled and ingrained in the DNA. What do you do when you have a good performer? but it's maybe not consistent with the culture of your organization and you, you made multiple attempts to, you know, coach through it. How do you handle that? I'd fire them. Okay. So, so, so you're, 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 you're treating culture. And, and again, the companies that do it right, it happens organically. You never have to say this, but I just want to articulate it. The you're, and this is newer. This isn't like, this isn't like a, a how do I say this? This isn't something that's been a trend for a while. That's actually brand new and Brett's on the forefront. You're treating culture as part of your job description. Is that fair to, is that, uh, fair to say? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm very much of, of that school of thought. Uh, I look at culture as, a, um, as such a critical part of the business that it's, it should actually be a, a, a function, a disciplined function, just like sales, marketing, and operations are. And if somebody doesn't fit in with your culture, no matter how good they are, they will eventually start to poison it. The toxic drips will start to happen. No matter how good they are, they, 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 it, it'll, it's inevitable that that'll happen. So before that happens, I would say to that person, look, you don't match our culture. Go and find a culture that you do match and you'll be happier there. Uh, you'll, be, you, you, you'll be more successful there. So for me, culture is actually a fundamentally critical piece of the puzzle for all businesses and not enough time and effort is invested in it. Give me, give me, okay. So we're going to, for those listening, we're going to save you a lot of time and money with this next question. Give us some pink or red flags to look out for that leaders should pick up on uh, or should look out for to spot or diagnose that someone is not aligned with culture. So the first, the first thing a leader has to do is define their culture because otherwise they're kind of doing it on gut instinct. And lots of leaders do okay with it, but it's not good enough and it's not sufficient to do that. But what you'll find is you'll find that your team look at, look at you and go, either consciously or subconsciously, why did you hire that person? What... They really, they, you know, they they're, they they get these. This terminology is they're, they're a brilliant asshole. They're brilliant, but they disruptive. They're arrogant. They work on their own. They 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 don't work with the team. They don't support. They take all the credit. They bully. They are um, incredibly uh, often very backstabbing um, in the environment. So. Those are the keys to look out for. And actually your staff really know because the people who are working with, with, them, with, with you have joined you with the not necessary. It's, it's, it's an implicit understanding that they like 
the culture that you have portrayed to them and you they may have been working with you for a year or two and they really enjoy working in your company when you bring somebody into the company who who disrupts that they are the first to spot it so really it's talking to your team it's it's understanding um, you know how people are operating in your organization and then looking out for those flags that I mentioned earlier okay now now again because when I think of company culture obviously I think about the whole 360 view so let's say for example again you're in a, a project oriented business right and you just again part of the culture you work till six o'clock so as a thank you you bring your whole team to the local pub you know and hey grab a beer or soda you know, not to get the drink but Let's all like, grab a drink or grab a soda and let's hang out. Let's grab some wings before we get home. Just a little thank you, right? What do you do when, you know, you have that kind of culture? And I'm not talking appropriateness, not inappropriate, but the appropriate. Yeah. Where you have a culture that is really dynamic, maybe a holiday party, you know, that kind of fun stuff. And, like, the one person really delineates when they think it's personal, like, hey, I'm not going to go to that pub or I'm not going to the holiday party or – you know, they kind of fall short on the stuff they legally don't have to do, right? But it falls way short of the culture. And I'm talking in an appropriate firm. None of this, like, me too, mm. inappropriate behavior. Appropriate behavior, but that extends beyond the workplace for culture. But a person who politely rejects, but does not do any extra niceties that help the culture evolve. How do you coach through that? Yeah, I would... I would say that your culture involves a lot, of, a, a number of initiatives. So, you know, going to the pub, maybe one of them going on a, an annual party, maybe another. And there are situations where, you know, somebody may have young kids at home or yeah. they may be looking after somebody at home. I would have, mm. I would first look to understand the circumstance and the situation and then I would look at the other culture in initiatives that are being run that do not involve being outside of work. So one of the culture initiatives could be, um, uh, you know, one of the companies I've, sp I've, I've worked with do uh, bring food on a Friday. So every, every second Friday love. of the month, yeah. uh, everybody brings you know, some food and they share. Um, if, if that person doesn't get involved in that initiative and isn't involved in the initiatives where they, you know, are rewarding or recognizing people, if they, if, if they are, I, I guess, 80% involved, that would be fine. If they 10, 20% involved, it means they probably don't fit. Uh, and I would, I would then have a conversation with them and say, you know, what is the situation? Why are you not getting involved? And if they say it's just not, you know, this isn't for me, then that I would say to them, you know, this, this is our culture. And if you're not comfortable in that, you, you know, you need, you need to really think about that. You know, you hit the nail on the head because I was maybe focusing on the wrong thing with my question and you answered it. If I'm not going to the happy hour, I'm not going to the holiday party. I'm not bringing in my turkey chili during potluck. I'm not sitting in on that lunch and learn. It's the aggregate behavior, not really the time, but when it is by not participating and by not participating speaks volumes. And, you know, I love transparency. I, I haven't always been the most transparent person in the past. Um, I've been radically transparent in my life and it, it's happened for the better, both personally and professionally. Um, so I like what you're saying along those lines too, being transparent. Listen, like, Hey, I noticed you're not as involved with these things. What's holding you back from, you know, doing more. And then realistically, like you said earlier, you may diagnose for them, you know, to the benefit of them. This may not be the right place. That's the other thing. One of the things I've always told my employees is it's okay to have an exit strategy. I don't want to like be, you know, going to the Starbucks on your, and you're on your every day off and you're interviewing somewhere else. Like in, in the U S and New Jersey, it's a fireball offense, you know? However, mm. um, you know, but I'd rather you say, Hey, listen, I'm taking off today. It's my personal time. Either don't pay me or taking this vacation day. Um, I'm not happy here. And let's have an exit strategy. Um, is, is a good culture over articulating and being transparent and maybe even discussing exit strategy open, you know, openly, or is that a little too extreme for you? Well, it depends on, it depends on the culture. Um, I, I, in my book, I talk about Netflix um, and they're the granddaddy of, of, of creating the culture deck. They launched, uh, published theirs in 2009. And one of their slides literally says we pay top markets 
And um, the reason we pay top market is we don't want money to get in the way of you being ha happy at Netflix. Um, it's not an, it shouldn't be an issue ever. So they actually recommend that you go for an interview with the competition on a regular basis. Oh, wow. Um, and if you go back, if you go to the competition and the competition will pay you 20% more for the same job, come back and tell us and we'll pay you 20% more, basically. Um, so, so they, what they don't want ever, they don't ever want money to get in the way because if your market value is higher, they don't want you to find out through the back door. They want you to find out, you know, and, and if the, if you're going to leave Netflix for, for that reason, then they failed by the same token. Wow. They have a, yeah, they, they have this, um, this, uh, a management evaluation, uh, which is quite a hard, some people see it as quite harsh, but they've got this, um, initiative called the keepers test. And a manager has to ask themselves every, every, every so often, if this person were to leave and go, and go to a competitor, how hard would I fight to keep them? Wow. And if, I, and if I wouldn't fight to keep them, then they must go. Then I cut them now. Wow. But, so, so I love this. And it translates not just to Netflix, but to the small digital marketing agency with five people in you know, Ohio. So, all right. So let's, let's do two parts. For the employer... Right. Um, how quickly do you expect somebody to uptake to the culture who's new? The, the, the that depends on the um, capabilities of the employer. Employer. So the so the employer, if they've done a good job recruiting based on values fit, then I would expect it to happen relatively quickly, and I. I, I state value fit specifically, not culture fit. Because if you hire for culture fit, I believe you're making a mistake. You should be hiring for values fit. And if you hire for values fit, then the employee should hit the ground running fairly quickly. Obviously, they've got to work out your company. They've got to work out how it works. But if you've got great onboarding, that'll happen pretty quickly. Okay, I love it. All right, now how about for the employee? Um, you sign on in a place and, you know, you, 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 it just doesn't feel right, you know, and, and again, like they outline their, their values and they outline their culture and they say what they're going to do, but you're there and, you know, maybe you're working harder, a little harder than, than you wanted to, or maybe whatever reason, it's just not the right fit. Um, is that something that, again, as an employee, should you notice right away or do you give it a chance to see if there's, you know, if there's room to grow into the culture? Yeah, this once again it depends on the employer. So if you're a company like LinkedIn or Netflix or Valve or Patreon and you do have a culture deck, you you know the you as the employee can go and have a look at that culture deck online and see exactly how the culture works. And so you you're going to go into that company with your eyes wide open. So you shouldn't end up in a situation where you go, "Wow, I'm so surprised at this culture. I'm so surprised at how hard they work. I'm surprised that they're looking for excellence because it's, it's very clear. It's all, it's all out there. Um, you can read it on, on the web at any time. So, it, but once again, if that employee is joining a company that doesn't have a culture deck, then they are, they could be surprised because the actual culture that they end up working in is not the one described to them. Interesting. So, 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 I used to work in a full-time sales capacity and so far sales is the only area that I've seen that they job shadow. Like they actually ride with a rep, sometimes multiple as much as a week. And you know, is a person riding with you looking at their watch at three o'clock? Are they yawning? Are they you know, using the phone per for personal reasons multiple times a day versus maybe over lunch or on breaks uh, during sales cycle. So like, so do you recommend if let's just say you do have, high performing culture and you have a higher barrier to entry obviously you want to follow local laws and people can't work for free but the same token if somebody's really serious do you recommend saying hey we want you to shadow the person doing your job now for three days and that's a requirement position you know do you think that will matter and will help like job shadowing might be a way to kind of weed out or get people acclimated to the culture during the interview process, or you don't think it's necessary to, if it's the right person, it's the right person. I want to get your thoughts on that, Brett. I think job shadowing definitely can help. It'll bring, it gets somebody up to speed pretty quickly. 
what other good companies do that's very successful is they have buddy buddies they have a buddy system so they'll you know if there's a new joiner coming on board uh, that person will get a buddy who is one of the employees from the company who is there just to acclimate them really quickly so they they help them arrange their first meetings they take them out to lunch on the first day they will introduce them to various people they'll explain the um the subconscious the you know the, the stuff that happens in the culture that you can't obviously see on day one and they will help people get up to speed and and that you know those buddy systems become really good friends over time so um I, I do think a job shadowing is is very powerful and uh, a great way to get somebody up to speed and budding combine combining that with budding is is a, a really great way to onboard somebody quickly that's a great tip so give us um some takeaways from the book and some maybe some keys on putting together a great culture deck so th- so as i said earlier the the key part is to start with the values and i think you if you're a small company if you're an early stage company you know, my book goes into a lot of detail about um, how companies look at diversity and inclusion, how they look at feedback, uh, transparency, but start with the values and then slowly build it out. The way I look at culture is it's culture changes over time. So if you're a five company person, you work in a certain way. Um, if you're a 25 company person, you work in a different way. So your culture has to adapt to the way you work over time as you grow and so the culture deck becomes a almost a a means for you to stay in contact with your culture so you look at your values the the big mistake that companies make is they don't define the expected behaviors this is the number one mistake that 95 percent of the companies who make the effort to define their values make so if you're if to give you an example tom you know if i ask hundred people out there, hundred leaders of companies, what does teamwork mean to them? They could say teamwork is a group of people working together, co- cooperating with a common goal to achieve in a certain amount of time. You know, that could be their interpretation of the word teamwork. But my interpretation of the word teamwork is the team always comes first. We're looking, we're talking about exactly the same thing, but with a slightly different view. And that means that values are open to interpretation unless you define them. So, uh, yeah, keep going because I so, always have butt in, but keep going, keep going. Sorry. So, so essentially, start with values, then define the expected behaviors, what you expect from the people against those, those values, and then look at mission, then look at your vision, then start to talk about onboarding, looking at feedback, how you deal with feedback, slowly build out your culture deck over time. Yeah, and sorry to butt in, Brett, because that, that, okay, that's, okay, that's what makes you unique, right? A lot of consultants, a lot of thought leaders are frankly full of shit where they come, hey, define your culture. And when you define your culture, list your values. And you're like, no, like, here are the behaviors that are needed that support the overall culture and your overall vision. And you're about transparency and clearly defining them and going even more so by having an actual deck or you know a, a document or a credo that's available that we can point that together and say hey almost like you know like hey this is what we believe in and you're not doing this or hey good job you're following this what about collegial um, feedback are you are you open to that we're like you know hey Brett uh, you know you, you, you're leaving a half hour early every day I really love you and everything but that's not really consistent with our culture. And we're colleagues. How, how are you with collegial feedback? I think that's um, the sign of a successful culture because the culture becomes policed by everybody because everybody's living the culture. So the, the um, responsibility for living the culture becomes the individual's responsibility. And you, if, if you see a colleague not behaving accordingly, um, according to the values and the expected behaviors that you've all agreed to and, and defined and helped define, then you definitely call them out. So I, I'm a, I'm a big believer in that. Beautiful. All right. So the funny thing is I could literally keep you on for, I, cause I'm fascinated with this topic and the value and the fire that you're spitting. I love, um, how can people find your book? So my book is culture decks decoded and it's available on Amazon. Um, you can also, 
find it through my website, which is www.culturegene.ai. And um, my email is brett at culturegene.ai. If anybody's got any questions or any thoughts or any comments, I'm here, to, I'm, you know, I'm here to learn about culture as much as I am here to talk about it in my book. So uh, drop me a line. I'd, I'd welcome hearing from many of your listeners and good people out there. Love it. And I appreciate you taking the time on vacation and uh, happy holidays to you. And uh, thank you for being on the uh, New Theory Podcast. Tom, really great. Have a great festive season. Thanks so much, Brett. And folks, those listening, please like, comment, or share, and please subscribe uh, as on the platform that you're listening to, the New Theory Podcast. Thanks so much.